Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Monastery Leadership Forum. We're very happy to have you with us again this week. I see lots of familiar faces here and a few new ones. So we're happy you have found us. I'm Kathy Leach and on behalf of the International Monastery Council and the Monastery Foundation, I will be your host today. And I am, we are blessed and graced with two wonderful guests that um, we have invited on to, to share with us today and to share with uh, our monastery community. They're really critical and important role in the work that we do. So I would like to first introduce Rebecca Pelton who is the president of MACT and Carolyn Pinkerton, who is, I think the state director, is that the right? It's a director of communications and state relations. That's a long, there you long go. one. Thank you for that. So we were going to, we're going to be discussing today MACD and MACD's role in, in the work that we do. Um, and we do also have with us several MACD board members. I'm going to go ahead and introduce them because I see that they're here and I'd love to have them participate as well. Galsavin, Galsavin, uh, Kaya, nice to see you today, Galsavin. Galsavin, are you currently on the board or are you in a, uh, yes, you are currently on the board. Thank you for that. And I think uh, Tanya Reiskin, uh, double duty here today. Tanya is also on the board of MACD and also I'm now on the board of MACD. So we are all working in together to do this, um, this really important work. I also have with us um, several of our IMC and Monterey Foundation colleagues. So Sheila Linville, Sheila's our IMC Director of Accreditation. So we also are very interested in accreditation at IMC. Thank you for being here today. I see Christine Lowry, who does a lot of work with us, Monterey Foundation courses, and um, also just did a wonderful um, workshop for MACD that many, many of us attended. And so again, our work overlaps in so many ways. And it's important to me that we all learn these ways that we all overlap and look at ways that we can support each other in the monastery community to advance our work uh, for children. So I've spoken enough, except one more thing, please um, notice your control buttons at the bottom. Your reactions button has the virtual hand raise, which helps me be able to see who would like to participate. As always, we'd love your comments and questions. And there's a chat button as well. The chat is always very active. Go ahead and put any comments or questions and we'll be monitoring that as well. Now I can officially turn over to Rebecca and Carolyn. Thank you both so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you, Kathy. I also want to, I didn't know if you recognize Vaiju from MPPI. Oh, I ha I did not. And yes, Vaiju, uh, thank you. Uh, Vaiju from MPPI and Vaiju will be on next week with us to share MPPI work with us. And, yeah, and thank you for being here because we do so much work with MPPI also in collaboration uh, at the state level. So um, thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, for those of you that are just coming coming on, my name is Rebecca Pelton, and I am the president of the Montessori Accreditation Council for Teacher Education. We call it MACD, and um, I've been with them. This is my 12th year. I can't believe it, Galzevin. And uh, <laughs> uh, prior to, uh, I've been in the accreditation uh, sort of world for um, probably 20 years after I um, left teaching. And uh, it's been very interesting prior to working for MACD, I worked for uh, the mm -hmm. former Teacher Education Accreditation Council that unified with uh, NCATE, the National Council um, for the Accreditation of Teacher Education. We always speak in acronyms, don't we? And then yes. when you have to, say it it's always a little difficult but yeah so they unified and now they created or we all created CAPE the Council for the Accreditation of Educator Preparation. So um, there's also um, AQIP which is the Association, help me out Carolyn, Association, what's the second A? Advancing? For advancing Quality educator preparation. So both of those organizations accredit teacher traditional teacher education programs in colleges and universities. 
and for traditional teacher ed programs. And then um, they are recognized, and I know this is a lot of information right off with um, acronyms flying all over the place, but they are recognized for the Council of Higher Education Accreditation. MACD is recognized by the US Department of Education. And let me just give a quick synopsis of why that is because uh, CHIA, the Council for Higher Education Accreditation, only recognizes uh, programs within colleges and universities that offer diplomas. So uh, back in 1992, when MACD was going to uh, work on their recognition, they had, it, they had to go with the US Department of Education. Um, the myth out there is that the US Department of Education only recognizes accreditors that need federal funding. And that is not true in our case. We offer that uh, any of our freestanding uh, institutions can apply for federal funding and they have that opportunity, but we only have four that have done so. And we have gone with USDE because they recognize us for programs within colleges and universities, freestanding institutions, and um, virtual delivery, distance education. So if you go on ed.gov for accreditation and you go to education, MACT is the only educator accreditor recognized at this point, at this time by the US Department of Education. And you all should be really proud of yourselves that you have a national accreditor for Montessori. I will leave it at that and I will turn it over to Carolyn to introduce herself and um, we'll go on from there. So is the test on this alphabet soup coming up later in the program? <laughs> or, or yeah. Rebecca did a wonderful crash course there of MACD 101, a little bit of our background and um, who we serve. Um, I was happy when I was, uh, we were offered. Thank you, Kathy, again, for having us here today. Um, and we said to Kathy, we would like this to be conversational back and forth. And she said, perfect, because that is what this group is used to doing. So um, we would really like to understand your experience with accreditation and um, your questions that you have for us um, about the work that we do. I will say that I was not fully aware of accreditation when I was a student myself. Um, and then when I started working in the schools, I knew about it, but I finally was going to be involved. And the school where I was working in particular, um, they seemed to be very stressed out about the accreditation process they were involved in. Um, it was a little hard to wrap my arms around as to why we were doing that because everybody had a different understanding as to the purpose of this. There seemed to be a lot of stress and um, grumbling and a whole lot of committees and notebooks. There was a lot of documentation involved. So it wasn't until truly my work at MACD that I became this accreditation nerd because I was shown that accreditation can be meaningful, that it has a very important purpose, and not just for quality improvement for a program, but value of assurance of quality to the broader public. So Rebecca, I'll turn it back over to you if you want to talk more about some of the changes that were brought on perhaps when you first started at MACD and our system of accreditation. You're muted, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, I think that maybe we should uh, first ask the question and see uh, uh, the response from our attendees. 
about their understanding uh, of the definition of accreditation. It's broadly used, so I'm just curious. Uh, can you tell us a little bit um, in the chat or even just raise your hand and we will call on you uh, with regard to the accreditation uh, and what it means? Well, I imagine many of us are familiar with school accreditation, for instance. There are several accrediting bodies that um, that accredit Montessori schools, uh, IMC being one of them. Of course, AMS, AMI has a recognition program. So some of you may be familiar with it from the school perspective. And I wonder what your impression of it is from the teacher education program perspective and what that impacts, how that impacts you with who you hire, what kinds of programs you choose for your teachers that you may be sponsoring. And Angie has um, responded. Hi, Angie, nice to see you again. She says, I'm from the healthcare field, so I know what accreditation means, also from the ed field and know that too. So, so you're familiar with accreditation and I would think many, many of our um, participants are familiar to a certain extent, but I, I just wonder on the teacher education program, someone walks into your school or they send you a resume and it says, here's where my credential is from. How do you know if this person is really fully qualified is, is sort of where I would be coming from on this. And go ahead, Lisa, I see your hand up. You can unmute. Yeah, so my question is actually, I, I'm a principal in um, Racine Unified School District in Wisconsin, and we are now starting to sponsor teachers to go to Montessori training. And so seeing that we are paying um, teachers to get Montessori trained, I want to be sure it is a training that I can trust that can they can maybe use even if you know when they're done teaching in our district. And so I have been on the search for training centers that are accredited. And so that, that's why I'm here today. And so, yeah. Alisa, thank you for your question. Um, it's really important. And I think that we need to make a distinction right now between a recognized accreditor and the use of the word accredit, accreditation or accredit, it's accredited because it's um, broadly used. Anybody can use it. As you say, um, Kathy, IMC accredits schools. They have standards, they have principles. There is a whole system around what that school has to be in order to be recognized by IMC as an accredited school. Correct. Because the word accreditation is used broadly, we are very um, careful to say we do not accredit schools. MACD is a recognized accreditor mm -hmm. under the US Department of Education, which means we have to meet all of their standards that is set out by the Secretary of Education and the department in order to be a recognized accreditor. And all of those standards we set up are a threshold, I know this is a lot, are a threshold for our recognized organizations. So IMC is one of our organizations and all of their accredited teacher education programs have to um, meet the threshold that MACD sets as their standards and principles, or they can go above and set it, but they can't go below. Does that nod your head if that makes sense to you? Okay. So Lisa, to answer your question, um, a program can, um, that wants to be, or that, uh, a teacher education program or a, a leadership program wants to be accredited and they have to apply for um, accreditation with MACD. And then they go through a very uh, rigorous two-year process in um, formulating and writing their self-study. What you would um, do in finding the the programs, the teacher education programs that are accredited in Wisconsin is you can go on our website and you can um, 
look through uh, by state, you can um, and see all of the programs that are accredited in Wisconsin or in the area or um, those that are being offered virtually. But we say we don't accredit 100% online programs. You have to have at least 120 hours of face-to-face -face residency. So um, does that uh, answer? Do you want to add to that, Carolyn, or Tanya, or Gulzevin, with regard to um, you know accreditation in the universal sense as far as uh, recognized accreditation? Well. I would say starting like your the baseline as Rebecca is saying is to look at a MACD accredited program. You can search by the region. And then I would go into looking at who the affiliate and and are there any kind of differences with their philosophy and what best aligns with your school mm -hmm. um, and, what, and what you're looking for. Thanks. I'm going to go to Angie next, and then Renee has her hand up. So Angie, if you want to unmute, we'd be happy to hear from you. Um, thanks for um, allowing me to ask my question. So I am from, my husband is um, one of the creators of Microsoft Teams. And so we are from the tech world, and we really believe in Montessori. And we really believe um, in distance education. And, um, and so here I am, you often see me eating, it's because I'm in Sulbaton, Alaska, and it's uh, nine o'clock in the morning here. Um, and I think it's really important that Montessori can be delivered anywhere for kids because I, I saw it in my own daughter, it was looking a little bit cruel when she had Montessori all the way up through sixth grade. And then she was gonna be put in um, a program, well, a traditional school. And so um, she, when COVID came out, she did um, a program called Guidepost that's MACD accredited, but they had, a different set of standards than I had seen. And so I'm just wondering how, how much, how different that is from traditional Montessori and how did you come up with a way to accredit distance programs for Montessori? So Guide, it, it, it's a little, um confusing. We actually had someone else ask us this question uh, in writing a couple months ago. We do not accredit children's schools. So we did not accredit the Guidepost Children's School. They also have a branch called the Prepared Montessorian Institute and a lot of their teachers. Um, so just like IMC has their children's school and their teacher education, you have, they have their children's schools guidepost, and then they have the prepared Montessori and teacher education. The PMI program is accredited by MACD and they may choose to do things a little differently, but they have to meet our threshold hours of instruction for those future teachers. They have to have a practicum experience. Um, and they do the majority of their academics online, but they have to come together for a minimum of 120 in-person hours or what's been called a residency. That's getting a little confusing because now we have teacher education programs who call themselves residency programs. So, but we can just simplify it by saying in-person hours. Um, and we see that our online programs are incredible in preparing excellent teachers. Part of the verification process at the end, the on-site verification visit is talking to employers and they give us feedback to tell us how the graduates of this program are doing. And the programs who are doing the majority of their academics online, they're doing wonderful jobs in the teacher room, in the classroom, just as those who did their academics in person. So we're big supporters of online learning as well. 
especially during this uh, pandemic time where a lot of people had to switch immediately to go virtual to train their teachers. Um, I know, uh, Renee, you have a question. I, I just need to, to just piggyback a second on what Carolyn said. And then um, uh, I'm hoping we can go into talking about the state work. A lot of um, schools in many states uh, are becoming public Montessori schools. I'm gonna be very general here because it's not every state, but we have a large group of public Montessori schools. When you reach and you're into the public sector, states have very strict requirements for what their teachers, um, they have to graduate from an accredited teacher education program. And so that is another reason why it's so important that uh, we have MACD, that uh, we have programs that, um, you know, have teachers that go right into the public school or they're already in the public school system, but they meet the state standards because they've graduated from an accredited program. Now, um, some states now are asking us uh, for crosswalks for their teacher, traditional teacher education programs and asking again, um, some of the questions you were asking, uh, how do we meet you know, them and the standards so that they don't have to go back and get uh, more education um, because they graduated from uh, Montessori teacher ed. And we're saying, if they graduated from an accredited program, the state should recognize their credential and their diploma, straight up. Yeah. The rigor that goes into these programs is um, sometimes much more than the traditional teacher ed. So I'll leave it at that. And um, I now, think I'd like to tag on to that too, Rebecca. I think that um, you know you have to acknowledge MACD, uh, your leadership, and the board for venturing into distance education at the Montessori teacher education level. This was not something that Montessorians took too easily or accepted readily. And I think it took a lot of courage to break through that and come up with something that could assure the quality and really give um, school leaders an opportunity to, to feel comfortable with the, uh, with the diploma that would be issued and the, and the accreditation for those programs. I just think it was not easily accepted. It has been shown over time, as Carolyn said, that the outcomes are uh, at least as, uh, as good as the face-to-face -face programs, if not better in certain areas. So I just applaud MACD's uh, courage in, in pushing that uh, forward uh, as we've seen that it can really um, offer far more accessibility to Montessori education than we had prior to this. Yes, yeah, so and we're very grateful too. Yeah. Uh, Angie, I was, I was thinking about another part of your question um, about the standards that we've had and um, those started off in the beginning as um, a little more basic and they've evolved over time and honestly we'll probably do another revision in a couple years or so um, but the standards for online learning right now are ways to make sure that uh, the students are prepared to be learning online that they have access to tech support if they needed it if um, that Kathy's teaching a class, she can make sure the person who's logged on for attendance purposes is truly that person. How are you going to be able to tell? And there has to be a certain amount of, um, uh, it has to be occurring in live time. So mm -hmm. it can't just be all record, recorded lessons go at your own pace. Yeah, synchronous is really important in Montessori. I, I would agree with that. Um, I. I think where there's a little bit of um, an issue, because I see this, my daughter's in now um, Academy of Thought and Industry. Um, it's not as hands-on. And I wondered how, you know, that part of the Montessori philosophy is very fluid, I guess. And is that okay? You know, 
Well, that and that is the reason for teacher training programs. That's one of the main reasons we require the in-person because it's not just getting their hands on the set of materials, which most people are not going to have a full set of Montessori materials at their home, but it's having supervised practice so people can, their teachers can make sure that they're using them correctly. Um, we've had programs though come up with some clever ways to get materials to students during the pandemic. So one program created a lending library of materials to send to adult learners at their homes. Mm. Um, and that can be sent back. Obviously that comes with a pretty good price tag to be shipping these heavy <laughs> materials to their adult learners, but they are able to do that. Um, other people during the pandemic have set up a place where people can come in and practice where it's limited in space and, you know, people are able to socially distance and, and still get their hands on the materials. But we agree, it, it, you need that hands-on time. Yeah. Would it be possible there... for me to talk to you a little bit later in private? Uh, um, I don't want to... <laughs> Now Thank let's everything. get to Renee. Renee's been yeah. waiting a long time. Thank you, Renee, for your patience. No worries. Hi, Rebecca. It's awesome to see you, as you, you know. Too. I know, exactly. But I want to first, you know, echo what Kathy said is that, you know, really kudos to MACD for, you know, looking at this accreditation online. Um, because I think, you know, the biggest thing I'm learning right now in some of the research and work I'm doing with some schools is that. The teacher shortage, which we always knew about, is growing and growing now, and the pandemic is causing more. And that if some teachers can do this online, you know, it's just going to help us in, in so many ways. And maybe schools can create some guided practice opportunities for first and second year teachers, you know, to kind of support that. Because I know there's nothing like guided practice or touching the materials and having somebody work with you. But um, but at the same time, we have a major, major teacher shortage, you know, in the in the world, actually. And I think, you know, everybody's asking everybody, what's the silver lining from the virtual learning we've had from the pandemic? Yeah. I think it causes us all to reflect on that. And even before that, we had a shortage of teachers. And can we do something here to make it more possible for them? Right. And I think that the virtual learning you know, gives us a big opportunity. I, I know the prepared Montessori and out of guidepost, and I think they do a heck of a good job in the elementary program from what I've seen. Um, so anyway, my last question, other than wanting to just get your attention for a couple of minutes, <laughs> is um, <laughs> where can I, where is there a list of the, this is a basic question of the MACD accredited online programs, because I'm working with two schools that, you know, want to send these teachers for credit, uh, credit uh, training, and they're asking me, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go to the webinar on Wednesday and find out. <laughs> <laughs> they're on, on our website. Um, it, it, there are um, programs that are listed under um, distance learning, but I, um, I would say right now, um, you know, the Center for Guided Montessori Studies obviously um, is virtual, and then other there, you just have to look. Um, like I said, on the website, and um, you can also um, email us and we can give you sort of a breakdown if a program is offering three or two different delivery methods. We find that too, that mm -hmm. um, they're going to do both. Yeah. They're going to deliver it face to face. And while they're doing it face to face, they have um, a cohort that is on virtually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this brings me up, if I, if I may um, just say, MACD does not tell a program how to deliver. Uh, they, we, we want the program to tell us. Yeah. And we give that framework and we say, you tell us. And we have found the creativity that has taken place between all of our uh, recognized organizations, between AMI, AMS, IMC, PAMS. I mean, you, you can go on our website to see we have um, now 10 recognized organizations that um, offer uh, teacher education programs. 
Mm -hmm. We do not tell those uh, teacher education programs how to run themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, this we wouldn't you say, Carolyn? We've been so impressed with uh, the creativity that people have come up with that have never taught virtually, yeah. and now are doing that and um, figuring it out. And we're there for a support system mm -hmm. um, to guide, but not to. Uh, I think that's been a misconception. When I came on board, I think we didn't have very many AMI training centers that were accredited because they felt that we were going to tell them what to do and change their whole delivery. Yeah. We don't do that. That's not what an accreditor does. Yeah. So Renee, so, you can search um, where Rebecca was indicating. It will tell you the percentage of how much is delivered online. So if you want like the majority online, you can search and it will filter out for you in that way. And uh, the three long-standing online learning programs, they do a residency in the summer. That's usually mm -hmm. two weeks where they, they get to go. And I mean, when I got to visit um, CGMS for their residency, I wanted to sign up. Everybody was so passionate. It was like, um, you know, and they were tired. It was a long day, I remember. But um, I, I think when we talk about the online learning, what Rebecca was saying with the, um, creativity we're seeing, there's also been, I think, people feeling a sense of humility because yes, anybody can just go and teach online, but to do it well takes a lot of work. And the people who have been doing it for a while make it look easy. But to really build that sense of camaraderie with a cohort, that takes effort and a lot of planning. Um, and to make sure that you're assessing people you know, in the moment as you're teaching, that takes, that takes a lot of finesse. And then the actual camera work as you're doing lessons, you know, you want to make sure you have the camera at the good angle so people can see what you're doing and set it up the same way. So I've have been very impressed by the people who said uh, in the past, I'm not, I would never, I'm not going to teach online. Then the pandemic came and they said, I have to teach online. And, you know, I appreciate some people afterwards said, this is just not for me. We did it and we know we want to go back. And then there are people who are like, we did it. And, oh my gosh, we've reached so many other people. We've uh, created an access that wasn't there before, yeah. but I know I need some help. And so people have been very generous in their time um, who are the veterans in the field and helping out and saying, here are some things you consider. Here's what's worked for us. Um, the support in the broader Montessori community for one another during this time has been really touching to see. Great, thank you. I have to share that the, the uh, chat is pretty active. We have several comments about, you know, MACD representing the quality. So if we hire a MACD credential teacher that we have some assurance uh, that you know, the training program has been vetted for a level of competency or comprehensiveness. Uh, MACD accreditation represents high standards and quality. So all of those things are really important. And, and one of the things I was speaking to Rebecca about earlier is it's up to us as school leaders to learn how to interpret whether or not this credential is something that we have that level of quality assurance. And I am one of those accreditation nerds and Sheila will laugh at this because I, I love accreditation. So some people think it's like, oh, it's sort of this necessary evil. I'm the kind of person, even when I ran a school, I looked forward to accreditation, probably much to my teacher's dismay. But at the same time, I think that we have an obligation to really look at those credentials, see if they're MACD accredited, understand what that means. Because we have, there are lots of online programs that, well, I shouldn't say lots, there's several that I know of that have um, issued certificates and, you know, buyer beware, the school hires the person thinking that this is a legitimate program and come to find out not only is the teacher not well prepared, but mm -hmm. now you're in a situation that you have somebody who may not qualify if you do try to become an accredited school because in the agencies that accredit them, I'm sorry, accrediting schools are looking for MACD credentialed teachers. 
We've spent years helping schools to understand the importance of this. And so I just want to make sure that everyone knows what to look for. There's a MACT seal on the diploma. It's not just a resume we're looking at. We're looking at the actual credential. Mm -hmm. I just think that's so important. It is uh, heartbreaking. I would say every couple of months, someone writes to us who completed an online learning program that looked very legitimate, but then they've gone to get a job and they find out they can't. And they're like, what can we do? Um, here's how to spot a diploma now. Everybody gets accepted. You can start at any time and you're just about guaranteed to graduate, to graduate, meaning you finish their online modules. There's no student teaching required. There's no supervision. And so people pay a good amount of money for some of these online programs. They get a nice looking, <laughs> a nice looking little, yeah. I don't even want to call it a, a certificate. I don't know what you would call it. Um, and then it's, it, it doesn't help them get to where they need to be. Yeah. It is, and it is heartbreaking. I've, I've had people come to my school to apply and have that same experience and have to break the news to them that in a lead position, we can only put a MACD credentialed uh, lead teacher. So, so we do want to help educate each other. We want to educate our potential teachers to know what to look for and to, to really understand the process that goes in, that's involved in this. Um, I have a great question here that I think is really relevant that Pecky asks, what is the what are the differences between MACD and AMI? That's such a great that's such yeah. a great question. Um, so uh, I think at the very beginning I was talking about so MACD is a recognized accreditor under the U.S. Department of Education, and MACD um, we have all of these organizations like IMC that um, have teacher education programs. So they, they have the, I'm gonna just use the, the Center for Guided Montessori Studies, right? So what we say to, um, like if I wanted to, I just, I wanna start um, Montessori early childhood teacher education program. And I want it to be accredited. And what we say is um, you need to be part of one of these organizations or you need to, um, you can be independent obviously, but if you have a philosophical sort of belief, people call us uh, and say, which one of these organizations should I join? And we say, we don't, absolutely we do not tell you which one to join, we don't. You have to uh, research, and can I share my screen, Kathy? Yes, you can. Okay, okay. So you have to research that, and we usually send you um, here to our website, and under accreditation, um, wait. oh, it's under about, Vicky, so you can click right here for affiliate organizations. Mm -hmm. And here they are. So you've got AMS, AMI, Christian, we have the Independence, IAPM, IMC. We just added Australia, Montessori Australia. These organizations have to apply to MACD to be a recognized organization. The difference is they are not accreditors. They are um, organizations, you know, jump in here, Kathy, you know, to talk about IMC. Um, so there's a huge difference. You know, a huge difference. And I think, you know, I can understand uh, somebody put in the chat how overwhelming all these different things are, right? It's, right. it's a lot to 
try to sort through and think what's really relevant and what matters to us. And I think, you know, the confusion comes in is that many of these organizations, well, several of them that I can see off the top of my head that also accredit independent or public Montessori schools. So this becomes it. So IMC accredits schools, but we affiliate teacher education programs Correct. that are accredited by MACD. And we only affiliate programs that go through MACD joint accreditation. So we have a commitment at IMC that all of our programs will be held to MACD standards and all of our adult learners will have the benefit of a MACD credential, a MACD seal on their credential. That's important to us to be able to tell every adult learner in any of our programs, you come out with that. And that helps in so many ways. So the, the confusion, I think, because we accredit schools, people think we're an accreditor of teacher education programs too. And the language does get a little bit, you know, it gets confusing. No, that's why we're doing this today to help <laughs> to help work through all of that. Yeah. Affiliate and accreditors, it gets, it, and they even kind of sound the same. And like Kathy was saying, mm -hmm. some of the, our affiliates accredit children's schools. I will tell people that um, MACD starts with saying what needs to be covered and the affiliate may choose to go more into the how. So an example would be, we tell each program, um, you need to have, what is your transfer of credit policy? And they might say, we don't have one. <laughs> you know, like we don't accept transfer credits. That's our policy. You need to have practicum standards. And then it's up to them to say, here's what our practicum standards are. You need to have this many hours of science. And then the affiliate will say, yeah, and that is this many of this type and this much of this, and, and they go into more detail. Mm -hmm. So um, can I comment on Angie's um, post? Uh, yes, and then I'll follow up, but go okay, ahead. Okay, so Angie, we do not accredit the teachers. We accredit the teacher education program. So, under uh, so guidepost school is a school there are schools okay so it's the prepared Montessorian which is the teacher education program that MACD has accredited that those teachers apply to and graduate from it's up to the program to inform the teachers that the program is accredited. Does that does that help guide? Go ahead, Kath, if you want to share. Yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm really I'm thinking this through because you know it's a school's culture and a school's policies and procedures that would dictate conferences and their um, attitude towards parent communications. That's 100% on the school. So I can become, I can be an excellent teacher, well-prepared, well-experienced. I can believe in uh, more teacher conferences and my school frowns upon that or the culture does not support that work happening. That's a, that's a school decision. That really is not even always the teacher's decision. Mm -hmm. So Macti, the what is it, because that was not part of what guidepost requested and how MACD would help them. MACD does not, we do not do anything with guidepost. That's the children's school. Or, or children around their school. That's the but, children's school. Right. Right. But you okay, do but with the teacher, the teacher education program. program there, don't you? I'm sorry? Well, and again, we accredit a teacher education program, but we wouldn't say, if, and you can look, if you want to go on our website, we have our, um, our, Rebecca, our guide, which says, here's what has to be covered. We do not go into the level of communication conference. That's going to be up to the training program and the affiliate to talk about how they're going to prepare future teachers to that type of level. Mm -hmm. Here's the resources. So... You have a document library and here are here's the guide to accreditation 
You just click on that and it gives you the entire guide. Mm -hmm. And you can download it. There's no cost and it will give you the process of application to writing the self-study. Well, what I'm saying is there's a dis, and I have looked at that. I went through it with a fine tooth comb. It was like, you know, or a concept like normalization or, you know, major concepts in Montessori education. And there's a disconnect then between, you know, if I say, well, you know, Sarah's not normalized yet and she needs to do this. And the teacher says to me, I don't know what normalization means. Then in a MACD accredited program that has nothing to do. No, I, I yeah. you guys. You would not find normalization in our guide to accreditation. Okay. You would see that Montessori philosophy has to be taught. Yeah. Right. But we, yeah. we, yeah, but we don't, we wouldn't say that. But I mean, if someone is a graduate of a MACD accredited program, that would be something they should be able to, to understand. Right. And as a be. parent, that is what I would want to know. Otherwise, MACD accreditation means nothing to, to me. Well, the teacher might not come from Guideposts teacher education program. The teacher might not, you, you, the assumption here is that the teacher works at Guideposts came from their teacher education program, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily true. It, in any, I, I just, I'd like to pull the, pull the conversation yeah. back a little bit, Angie, because I think what, what you're talking about are things that are directly related to a school's choices. And the school hired this teacher, the teacher may or may not have, uh, all the competencies that you're looking for in as a parent looking for a teacher. But that's different. We're not talking about content. We're not talking, talking about what's taught. So we're putting in place, there's certain competencies that should be acquired, MACD is, and that the training program's job is to ensure that those competencies are met. So Right now, the issues you're bringing up are specifically related to schools, not to the teacher education program itself. You can go back and find those things out. What, what was this teacher taught in teacher education? But we all know that great programs can turn out mediocre teachers. That's the reality. It's not a, it's not a factory model. And just like you know, great Montessorians are out there who don't have a piece of paper, who don't have a credential. So there, there's, it goes both ways. So we can't take one isolated teacher and apply a generalization that the MACD credential is not relevant. Mm -hmm. I just wanna make sure that we get clear about the school's role, the teacher education program's role and MACD's role because they're three very different levels of responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna to go to Sheila who has her hand up. Yes, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I'm the Director of School Accreditation and Affiliation for the International Montessori Council. And it's a delightful conversation. I really do feel that these conversations are important for, for heads of school to understand what the MACT credential means for the teachers coming in. And also if you have, if you are a school looking at accreditation, uh, what the accrediting organization is looking for with teacher education. Those are really important pieces. I can say uh, I had been in accreditation for a long time, but when I came to IMC last year, um, the TEP component with MACT and IMC, it takes a little while to settle and kind of get your your framework for it. Um, but I think Rebecca and Kathy are doing an amazing job in, in, in sorting it and teasing it out. Um, so I just want to say, you know, I'm glad to be here and thank you for, for, um, for letting me share that. Thanks, Sheila. And I think, Kathy, I appreciate what you said of uh, you can't, you do the best work you can. You might have someone who graduates who's not at it, the highest of the caliber. And the hope is that that person will have a wonderful um, at a school, someone who can mentor them and encourage them and help them continue to grow. And accreditation, I think we're doing a pretty darn good job, but 
It was set up by humans, it's run by humans. And just as we ask programs to continually improve, we are doing the same thing. We are currently uh, looking at our bylaws and that's under revision. And um, from time to time, there is a program that comes on our radar is not uh, in adherence to what they need to be. They're not in compliance. Um, and so we work with them to get back in compliance for whatever that might be. But we, we will not tell you that it's 100% uh, perfect or assurance. Right. Yeah, I think that the, the key that, that, that MACD does um, allow for the autonomy of the teacher education programs is really an essential part of what MACD does, that we do yeah. not want MACD. I mean, Rebecca spoke about it earlier that AMI in the beginning didn't have a lot of accredited programs because they were concerned that MACD would be dictating the content. And so I, I think it's essential that our teacher education programs have autonomy from their accrediting body. That is not, that, that would be um, a monopoly, so to speak, if the accrediting body was dictating the content of the programs. But the competencies, yes. What someone should come out with and know and be able to do, that's important. Sheila, is your hand back up again or are you um, still? Okay, I'll go to Cassie next, thanks. Um, hi everybody, um, I'm Cassie. I actually am an AMS School Accreditation Commissioner. Um, so that's part of my blood as well. But Angie, I just wanted to address you real quick. I think maybe if you um, look into guidepost and what they're doing for school accreditation, because that's where a school really um, gets into the nuts and bolts of what they're doing and making sure they're doing what they're saying they're doing. And that's kind of what I hear you saying. Yeah. So, um, because we have so many teachers coming from different training session centers, um, a school accreditation really brings it all together and helps everybody be on the same page. So that might be something um, that you might want to look into because I think it relates to your questions a little bit more than the MACD um, certification or the accreditation of teacher training programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Cassie. So Thank I have you. done that in lots of different school accreditations. Um, but no, my question is more like what should so I have a, a degree in traditional education. And when I came, when I come out, you know, we have to take a, a, a test. We had to take a test. Um, and that there are certain things that every person with an ed degree knows about. And so when someone's hired from a program that's accredited for teacher education, they know that this person is competent and understands the main things in this field. I also have one in, a degree in psychology. I also have a degree in occupational therapy and it's the same thing with all of those things. And all of, uh, those, all of those programs are accredited Mm -hmm. that you graduated from. But those programs don't go back to see whether you are doing um, an, what you've been trained to do. They don't, the creditor does not do that. Yeah. No, the creditor doesn't do that. But the reason that those places are that those things are accredited is for trust of the public, of parents, my ed degree of parents and children and my OT degree for trust of, so. So we're saying that the programs that we accredit, mm -hmm. we guarantee to the US Department of Education that they do, they're doing what they say they're doing. But yeah. we do not go back and check on every teacher. That's as, as Kathy so nicely articulated and so did um, Sheila, it's up to the, the schools the, to make sure that their teachers are um, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, so, so teacher education programs can look at what can we 
teach, what we can present, teachers can be tested on that. And they are, that's part of the process. They're evaluated, they're, evalu they're supervised and evaluated over time. They pass final examinations. That does not guarantee, and I, and I hope that we're not all sitting here thinking because teachers in a traditional setting pass that test and have licenses that that means that they're all great high quality teachers because I think that we can agree that that is not an assurance of that. Right. No, but it, so hold on. It, yeah, I'm gonna, okay, go ahead, Rebecca. Then I'm gonna go to Christine. Then we're gonna have yeah. some closing comments. Okay, so, so states that, rec let's do South Carolina. They recognize a credential from a MACD accredited teacher education program for licensure, licensure to teach in that state. But every state can add regulations to that. Those teachers have to take the praxis. Okay, so it's not like um, the states aren't requiring things for teachers that graduate from an accredited program. And um, Vaiju could speak to this. I, are you still on? I don't see you. Um, but this is what I am. We work. Okay, so this is what we work in tandem with, uh, Angie, is the Montessori Public Policy Initiative to get states to understand what uh, an accredited Montessori teacher education program provides to the education of that teacher. And then the, the, the state um, you know, can add on what they want as far as testing, but don't think that these teachers in these programs haven't been tested over and over and over again. Okay, back to you, Kathy. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, to you, Christine. Christine had a question or a comment, so we'll go. I, I'm just gonna add one quick comment. Um, yeah. I teach online courses to Montessori teachers, and I also work with large and small Montessori schools. All of their teachers have uh, earned their credential from a MACT accredited teacher education program. But because of lived experience, because years of experience in the classroom, um, you know, each human being is unique. And, and while we all have been exposed to a body of information and we have been tested on that body of information, what we do with that information when we get into a school. So it's like, you know, you, you, you probably did fantastically well on your final exam for your teacher um, credential. My guess is that there were other people the same year, the same courses, the same professors that went through that program with you that maybe didn't score as high, or maybe they got into a different situation and some of what they had learned they didn't have an opportunity to repeat and to work with, and, and it kind of went by the wayside. And, you know, so I think we do have to keep in mind that everyone has strengths and everyone has challenges. And yes. if there's a concern about your daughter's teacher, then you go to the teacher first and then the director of the school. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like nice. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, Christine. Well said, Christine. I'd like to give the last couple of moments that we have together back to Rebecca and, um, Carolyn, and any final words and thoughts, and to remind everyone that we will be continuing a similar discussion, but a little bit different with MPPI and Baiju and Denise uh, Monier next week. So this Carolyn. time went by quickly. So I will say you can always reach out to us um, if you have questions that didn't get answered today, or you would like to somehow be involved with MACD. Um, our emails, carolyn at macd.org, rebecca at macd.org. You can follow along on our Facebook page. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter through our website. If you are interested in accreditation visits, we are always looking for qualified individuals to serve on those. Most of them are being done um, virtually if you're close by and can attend in person. At this time, we are doing some of hybrid visits, but we um, we love engaging with our constituency and would like to have you involved if accreditation is your thing. <laughs> and thank you, Kathy. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you so much. I, I just want to say this was a lot of information <laughs> and uh, in a short period of time. So um, I echo what Carolyn said. If you have any questions with follow-up, please don't hesitate to write us. Um, we love to hear from you. 
Thank you for this opportunity uh, so much, Kathy. I really appreciate it. And it's so wonderful to see some of my old friends who I haven't seen in so long. <laughs> Oh. I, I, uh, I think it's it is great isn't it nice to actually see people and see yeah. faces? it's really wonderful and I appreciate yeah. everybody's time today and I can tell that this is a conversation we might need to have a little more often um, I already have requests for the, you to come back and talk to us some more about this and so you know maybe we look at a periodic uh, appearance of <laughs> special guests I, and love that. Come on. I think it's just such a service to the monastery community to understand how all this works and not leave people guessing. Um, and I also want to say that I'd love to have you both um, at our conference once we're hopefully back in person again in November in, in St. Petersburg and put something together where people can be a little bit more um, in depth and interactive uh, in, in a presentation and, and perhaps a round table discussion. So we'll chat about great. that too. I'm glad you're following this up with Denise and Baiju because I think that that's another piece to the puzzle. So mm -hmm. after they do their presentation, then if the maybe the four of us get together and we could answer questions, so that would be- um, Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. The community. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. That'd, that'd be great, yeah. Okay, well, I um, know that we've taken everyone's precious time today. Thank you so much, Rebecca and Carolyn, on behalf of MACD. Thank you for all of you who are participating, and we look forward to advise you and Denise from MPPI next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank Take you. care. Have a great week. Kathy, can you stay on for one second with Carolyn? Yeah.